Golly gee, I have some free time. I'm gonna read some codexes. But which one am I in the mood for? Man, these cover arts are pretty cool, but they lack a certain something. Nah. Boring. Nope. <gasps> Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. The other day I was perusing eBay and I found this little fella. I was actually looking for the old assassin models. I got this guy in the hopes that it would snowball into the full set. The reason I was looking for these old assassin models is the other day I was at a used bookstore and I came across this old codex. This wonderfully retro third edition 40k codex comes in at a whopping 10 pages with a wonderfully over the top cover by the artist Wayne England. And is it safe to say that this cover is paying homage to Iron Maiden's Eddie character? The similarities to the single cover for the Trooper is uncanny. If a cover like this was published today, I wonder what people would think of it. Would it knock people's socks off or just leave them confused? Although I'm a pretty young blood in the grand scheme of 40K, I love old books like this. I'm like an archeologist, but a cool one. I'm basically Indiana Jones. I can pour over this book, carefully examining it, and my encyclopedic knowledge of modern 40K lets me see and understand the wonderfully retro models and artwork. I can see the evolution, how this stuff evolved over time to become modern 40K. And speaking of Indiana Jones, can anyone else relate to the that belongs in a museum syndrome I'm experiencing? I love new plastic models. They're super cool, the engineering is amazing, the quality is out of this world. They are my babies. Or rather, they should be but I am rough on my new plastic models. I pick them up by the handful, I let them knock around in a cardboard box when I'm transporting them. But whenever I work on old stuff, like this Vindicar Assassin, I feel like the white silk gloves need to go on. This is a piece of history, even though it's just an old lump of pewter that's not really from that long ago. Getting back to this book, I know wargamers love two things, collecting and complaining. I wonder if having to buy this book to play one of four models irked the wargamers of old as much as modern players like to complain about the codexes. Sure, they are just a tax to play the game, but there is something magical about them, especially the old ones. This one really gets me in the mood to paint. And digging into this book a little bit, it's full of lots of fun quotes like this little bit of flavor text about the might of the assassins. The officio assassinorum is responsible only to the fabled senatorum imperialis, the high lords of Terra, who interpret the emperor's will. Silent, deadly, and ruthlessly efficient, an assassin can strike at the heart of a problem, quickly and cleanly, removing all those who would dare oppose the Emperor. Impassive and impersonal, an assassin sends a clear message to a heretic and rebels. No one is beyond the Emperor's justice. Or this wonderful and in no way dated description of the founding of the assassins. No world shall be beyond my rule, and no enemy shall be beyond my wrath. Thus spack the Almighty Emperor on the summit of Mount Vengeance on Thor. And a number of his most loyal servants did meet together, eager to serve the Emperor as best they could, to help enact his dreams of conquest and rulership of the galaxy. Skilled were they in stealth and subterfuge, accomplished in the arts of death were they. They hunted down those who would bring ruination to the Emperor's divine plan, and struck them down as a bolt from the heavens. But as much as I enjoy the lore, I have YouTubers like Baltimore's Guide to 40k and Luton09 for that. The old school drawings, paintings, and photos of painted models are where it's at for me. They were still figuring it out back then. There were no rules. They didn't have eons of battle tutorials to show them what was what back then. They had paint and enthusiasm. Tan base coat, and you know what? How about green highlights? And check out those bases. They refused to be confined to the tops of the base. And you know what? I don't like it. I don't agree with it, but I respect it. I have read and reread this codex over and over. Not a big ask, it's only 10 pages, but I am jazzed to paint up this Vindicar Assassin. There are four flavors of Assassin. The Anti-Psyker, the Undercover Operative, the Crazy Killer, and this model, the Sniper. One thing I struggle with a lot in my painting is value. Value is all about lightness and darkness. You can think of it a little bit like good versus evil. It's all about how much white or black is in your paints. Now on this guy's black bodysuit, I won't be able to hide behind fun colors. I'll have to use black and white and maybe a little bit of blue, along with some careful highlighting to get the job done. Even though it's physically small, this project is gonna require every tool I have. All right. 
right. It's time to paint this assassin. I did a little last minute cleaning of the assassin using my knives and sanding sticks to smooth away any imperfections. These are much easier to see on a primed model. Believe it or not, this is not a monopose model. Kinda sorta, one option. But it does make a significant change to the look of the model. His sniper is meant to be glued at his hip like this, but I don't really like that look. It looks too much like a pose. I decided I liked the gun held at the waist, like he has sensed danger and thinks that his pistol will be faster on the draw than his sniper, and he's scanning his surroundings looking for the enemy. I glued the gun on with good old fashioned super glue. Would pinning or epoxy have been better? Sure, but I don't think it's gonna matter. And if I do knock it off down the line, I can just glue it back on. And speaking of gluing, this guy fits really loose on the base, but life hack. Just bend the tab into a V and then it should pressure fit in just fine. A little super glue and baking soda later and he was properly attached. I'm not completely sure how I want to base this guy. I was thinking city or maybe a jungle or something, something dark that'll kind of blend into most environments and I haven't nailed it down yet, but I don't have to decide right now. I think I'm actually going to base this guy after he's done being painted. I stuck my little assassin down into one of my favorite paint handles, a little cube of wood, and got ready to paint. A few blasts of black primer through my airbrush and he was ready to rock. Then I prepared a palette, starting with good old fashioned black and white, then some blue, green, brown, yellow, red, and a little bit of earth. I want to practice values, so I want to use plain colors and mix them myself. I'm sitting here wondering how to proceed on my Vindicar assassin. Should I apply my darkest darks and then highlight, or should I apply my lightest colors and then shadow? Usually that's how I paint and it's a pretty good system because it boils the painting process down into two steps. You got your lights, you got your darks, and then wherever it meets in the middle just becomes your mid-tone. But on this guy, I'm not really sure. I feel like th that style of painting only really works when you have a really solid vision. And I don't really have that with this guy. I think I'm gonna have to discover it along the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put on my most medium colors and then go from there. I slathered on some pure blue. This made him look a lot like Captain America, and even though I ended up covering most of this up in the end, it was important to see him all blue. He did look very dapper, and it let me familiarize myself with all his muscles. Then I mixed up some dark blue on my palette. No careful ratios, just eyeballing it. I painted this color into all his recesses, starting with his abs. I continued for about an hour, going back and forth with dark blue and light blue. I've just wrapped up his suit, and I really, really like where I got it. All I did was a little bit of heavy blue and white and black paint, but it turned out really nice. And I think I can show exactly how I did it on his butt. Remember, you can't spell assassin without ass. Twice. I took his base coated behind and I outlined it with dark blue. Then I went back in with my original blue and made sure that his cheeks were nice and round. Then I did a darker wash of black, very watery, just to make sure that the right areas were drawing the eye. Then I went in with a light blue and did a small highlight on the top of each cheek. This would be where the light is catching. I took my fine detail brush and drew on a fine line on the top of each cheek to give them a bright edge. This is a lot like an edge highlight. And that process was exactly what I did for every part of his suit. Next it was time for his harness. I mixed myself up some dark red and base coated every strap with this. The red looked really good on top of the blue. Then I used pure red for the highlights, and I liked the contrast against the blue so much that I really made the red strong. It's like if Spider-Man met the Punisher. And speaking of superhero crossovers, you know what is even more popular than superheroes? That's right, the Eons of Battle Patreon. If you enjoy the videos we make, you might consider becoming a member. Over there, you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, and more. With that said, let's get back to sniping some paint on this sniper. After this red, the next color I introduced was green. I mixed my green with a little bit of black to make a more military color. Once that was dry, I mixed some green and black to make a wash and put this on both his guns. Then an edge highlighting with my true green. These old metal weapons are a little light on detail, but they have nice prominent features that are easy to reach. I have finished this guy's clothing, his straps, and his guns, and I feel like I'm at that point in the paint job where I might be 80% done or 50% done. Because now it's time for all the little details, and it's really hard to guesstimate how long it's going to take to paint the details. But I think I'm getting pretty close on this guy. I mixed some brown and black together and threw this onto his pouches and holsters. A sci-fi assassin has some nice natural leather gear. I used the pure brown for an edge highlight and then I washed it with a little bit of black paint. Then I mixed myself up some grays, a dark, a medium, and a light, using my black and white paint. I base coated all the bits that ought to be gray, like his bullets and the scope on his gun with a dark gray mixture. 
And I also used my grays on his tactical visor, using my gray and light gray to highlight and edge highlight. This went quick because there's just not that many decorations. I wanted to push these decorations just a little bit more, so I used pure white and just threw dots of this around, like light was glittering off of these metal doodads. I just finished painting this guy's visor and boy oh boy, 10 out of 10, I would always recommend to paint the head a different color. It really makes the most important focal point of the model stand out. There's only a couple of things left to do. I'm really excited to paint the eyes in his lenses, but before that, I'm gonna have to paint all of the skulls all over his armor and weapons gold. But not really gold, a non-metallic metal gold. I base coated all the skulls with brown. This guy is looking very colorful and not particularly sneaky. But the tech in his suit probably makes him turn invisible like the Predator, so it's no big deal that he looks like a clown. I highlighted the skulls with yellow and the details are so soft that there isn't much to bring out. There aren't even teeth, it's just a lump with two holes in it. I threw a black wash over the skulls to knock down the color a little bit. I did this mostly just to make sure that the yellow spots did not pull focus away from the face and the weapons. Now it was the moment we have all been waiting for, the visor. I base coated it with a little bit of red. I picked out his eyes with some yellow and white to make them just a little bit more interesting. And he is done. Well, actually he's not done because he's not based. I've put it off as long as I can. I have not decided what I'm gonna do to base this guy. I could go industrial and then he would look right in line with the current Assassin's Game Trickshop cells, but I'm not feeling it. I think I'm gonna go kind of dark foresty base, probably with one skull and a couple of empty bullet casings. That way it'll be nice and subtle and out of the way and he'll look pretty appropriate no matter what type of game board he's on. I got out the model magic and super glued it down to the base. This stuff is like foam, it's very light. If you really want to build up some height on a base, this is the stuff to use. And you can work with it before it's fully dry. Just don't stick models down to it before it's fully cured. Crayola Model Magic Soft Squishy Modeling Material is one of my favorites all time products and it's gonna make sticking down some small rocks and some skulls super duper easy. I super glued down a skull out of the Games Workshop Skulls box. Then I covered it in wood glue in preparation for some sand. I started with some large pebbles, then I put on some smaller pebbles, and then some medium grit sand, and then finally a dousing of fine grain sand. Then I decided to YOLO. I just slopped down some green and brown paint onto the unprimed sand. I won't tell if you don't, and I think it'll turn out perfectly fine in the end. Then I took what was left of the black paint on my palette and made up a wash and put this all over the base. And just like that, the base was finished and the only thing left to do was to paint the rim of the base black. I didn't plan to do a very retro paint scheme, but that is where the model has taken me. I don't know what arcane sorcery exists in these old models, but it took control of my hands and turned this project into a bright, bold, colorful, old school paint job. I really like how this guy turned out. I think mine is a little bit better than some of the other paint jobs that you can uh, find in this book, but that's okay. While I was painting him up, a bunch of different characters came into my head. He's a little bit Captain America. He's a little bit Judge Dredd. You know what? He might even be a little bit Crosshairs from Bad Batch. It's not the world's most unique character, a sniper assassin, but it gets the job done. And even though this book is long out of date, it gives some really interesting suggestions on how to play this model in game. One interesting suggestion the book gives is to create an assassin versus army game type. One player creates a very small army, a hero and some bodyguards. Then the other player takes the assassin. The assassin starts a fair distance away and must kill all of the enemies before he or she is found and eliminated. They even suggest that the enemy should not be aware of the assassin on the board, and the controlling player should keep track with pen and paper until the enemy moves within two inches of the assassin's hiding spot. At that point, the assassin is uncovered and a fight to the death ensues. I think I achieved what I set out to do. I worked off of a very limited palette, and I used black and white to darken and lighten my paint where necessary. Usually, with models I'm more familiar with, I can just pull the color I'm thinking of out of my collection. But sometimes it is helpful just to mess around on a palette and discover the right color. This model turned out very retro, and I think it would be an interesting experiment to paint up the new Plastic Games Workshop Vindicar Assassin and see if that model pushes me in a more modern painting direction. Let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. I always love a retro project, and it's fun that Games Workshop has been around so long that there's basically always two of every sculpt. Options are always great, and it's nice to sometimes take a break from working with newer, better, more modern, awesomer plastic poses and giving Pewter a try. But now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. 
We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Chaos Champion by Comiconomics, a Necron Royal Warden by The Fluffy One, some Blood Angels Terminators by Dreech, a Space Marine Combat Patrol by Mega Slade, some Stormcast Eternals by Duplicorn, a Primaris Invictor Tactical Warsuit by Ryan T, a Blood Angels Terminator with Thunderhammer and Storm Shield by Muckle, a Nihal Stormcaller by Birdbrains, a Gaggle of Dwarves by The Brave, a Pair of Penitent Engines by Lookout Science, a Saint Celestine by Dark Lord Bodish, a Yundrasta by Lube, some Primaris Aggressors by Sezero-K, a Necron Scorpac Destroyer Lord by Bred S, a Knight on Horseback by OX4297, a Necron Royal Warden and Lackey by Disco, a Mephiston Lord of Death by Cheap Maddie Light, a Turtle Warrior by Master Builder 75, a Knight Lord's Chaos Army by Dancing of Doom, a Black Templar Apothecary by Asuka, a huge batch of 60 Grots by Elecman24, a Stormcast Eternal by Death Arsenal, a Necron Satan Shard of the Nightbringer by Civilian Waffles, and a Big Space Marine by Mighty Penguin55. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.